Welcome to worship. It's so good to see all of you here this morning. Just a few quick words of announcements before we begin our time together. I'm going to encourage everyone to take your green insert out of your bulletin and read through that because that has all really the information that you need to know. And for me, if it's not written down, I always forget it. So this is a handy resource for us. First, excited to announce that we have faith formation for all ages happening today immediately after worship. Adult formation will be in the Antioch room, which is over here by the offices. And then we have faith formation for children of all ages. So we hope that you'll join us for that. And also speaking about faith formation, on October 2nd and October 9th, we're going to be having some special guests 
from our outreach partners to come and talk with us. And I wanna invite all of you to be there. You might be the person who you usually don't hang out after worship and come to Faith Formation. We wanna pack the house for our outreach ministry partners. On October 2nd, we'll have someone here from the community table to tell us more about their ministry. And then on October 9th, we'll have someone here from the Rising. That will happen immediately after worship in the parish hall. So really, let's have, I'd love to have 50, 75 people packed into the parish hall to support and accompany our ministry partners. So please mark your calendars for that. And speaking of our outreach partners, we'll be going back to the gathering place on September 19th. And as always, are looking for people to serve and people to bring food. If you can help, there is a sign up out in the narthex on that. And then excited as well on September 24th to Saturday, please join us at Ralston Central Park from two to four for our King of Glory in the park. And guess what you have to bring? Nothing, just yourself. We're making it really easy. This is an opportunity just to connect with one another, spend time in community, talk with one another, and then our kiddos will be right by the playground as well so our kiddos can play and have fun. This is for everyone of all ages, so please join us for that. And then also, I'm offering several Bible studies during the fall. The first one just kicked off this last week, but that's okay. You can always jump in. It's called Discovering Our Spiritual Past. If you've ever wondered what spirituality is and how we understand it, especially in the Lutheran world, please come join us. Uh, that's on uh, Tuesdays. Oh, no, it's on Thursdays, not on Tuesdays. It's on Thursdays. It starts at 10 a.m. And then I'll also be doing a Zoom Bible study later in October on Tuesday evenings based on a book called Faith after doubt, recognizing that doubt is a normal, natural process of our faith lives. And when we engage in those conversations, the way that the spirit can cultivate a deeper life for us and for the sake of the life of the world. So please join me for that. So those are all of my announcements. And now I'd like to invite Lynn forward to tell us a little bit more about the crop walk. Thank you. And with that, let us now prepare our hearts and our minds for worship with our musical meditation.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. You are invited to either remain seated or kneel. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. Our gathering song this morning in your red hymnal is number 641, 641, all are welcome.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. You may be seated, and kiddos, come on up for a sermon for all of God's kids. Good morning. Come join me. There we go. Awesome, awesome. How is everybody this morning? Good? All right. Fabulous. Okay. Yeah, I can scooch over. There you go. All right. I have a, you know me, I always have questions, right? Okay. Okay. So here's the question. Here's my question for you. What all do you, what do you need? What do you need to be healthy and well and thriving and all those things? Food and water, right? Those are essential to life. And not just any food, right? Good quality food, right? Fruits and vegetables and good things like that, right? And clean water, right? We want clean, clean water, right? Can you see that, please, buddy? What else do we need? So we need food, clean water. What else do you all need? What do you need? Families. families. That is a great answer. We need families, right? We need, we need people who love us for who we are, right? A safe place to land when life gets hard and rough and challenging, right? We need that. What do you need? Friends. Absolutely. We need people that we can share life with together, right? Absolutely. What else do you all need? Any other ideas? These are great ideas. A roof over your head, right? A warm, safe house that not just keeps us out of the weather, right, but that also is some place that we know we can go where we're safe, right, a safe place. What else do you need? Clothes, absolutely. We need clothes to wear and shoes on our feet, right, good shoes so we can run and play and have fun. 
Not my shoes. My shoes are not good running shoes. No. But everybody else has pretty good shoes that you could probably run in. What about school? Do kids need a good place to go to school? Yes, we do, right? Because God has given each of you beautiful gifts and skills, and school helps us hone those so we can use them for the sake of the world, right? So let's, let's recap here. We got good food, clean water, families, a house, a school, friends, right? These are all things that we need, right? Now, if we need those things as young people, do you think all young people need those things? Yes. And are there some young people who maybe don't have those things? Unfortunately, you're right. Today, Jesus is going to invite us that as children of God, or as Jesus says today, children of the light, we're called not only to look after what's best for us, but to also look out for what's best for our neighbor and for our friend. So if it's what's best for us is to be loved, what's best for our neighbors and friends? The same thing. You got it right, to know that they're loved. If it's best for us to have food and clean water, what's best for our friends? The same thing. You get where I'm going here? All the things, right? So Jesus says, as children of God, think about what's good and best for you, to know that you're, you're beloved children of God, right? And to have all of these basic things that we need. And then we're called to go out and to share that with the world so that everybody has what they need to live life to the fullest that God has given. All right, so be thinking about that this week, that it's not just about us. It's also about what our neighbors and our friends and our family need in the name of Christ. All right, y'all are on it this morning. Y'all must have eaten your Wheaties this morning. You guys are like, what are Wheaties? But y'all are always very smart, so y'all got this. All right. Would y'all like to pray with me? All right, everybody take your hands like this. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for all we have is a gift. Help us to share what you have given us so that all people may have life in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, friends. You can head back to your seats. Hear this, you that trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, when will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain and the Sabbath so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the epa small and the shekel great and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob Surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Word of God, word of life. A reading from the book of 1 Timothy. First of all, then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God. There is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus, himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this I was appointed a herald and, a, and an apostle. I am telling the truth. I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the gospel acclamation and the reading of the gospel lesson. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go?
Gospel according to Luke, the 16th chapter. Glory, Glory to, you, to you, O Lord. O Lord. Then Jesus said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, What will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do, so that when I am dismissed as manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So, summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, How much do you owe my master? He answered, A hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly, and make it fifty. Then he asked another, and how much do you owe? He replied, a hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and make it 80. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, Make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into the eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much, and whoever is dishonest in very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have not been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Today, I am opening the floor to anyone who would like to preach today. <laughs> Any takers? Oh, man, I thought I'd maybe get one person. So I'm going to be really vulnerable with you all this morning and let you know I am completely and absolutely befuddled with this gospel text. Anybody else? Oh, good. It's not just me. Okay. As I was studying this past week, not one single commentator agreed with another one. I, really, I, I've never seen this before. They were all at odds with each other. There's not one single way to interpret or understand this passage. And so the, the deeper that I dove, I realized that I don't think we will ever get down to the author's original intent of this parable. I think we're too far removed from it. And in fact, I don't even think Luke knows what to do with it. Did you notice at the end of the gospel, he's like, okay, I'm just going to throw some random sayings of Jesus in here and try to tie it all together. And some of it fits and some of it doesn't. So you can just see how I'm absolutely befuddled. So welcome, welcome with me into all of this. But the one question, I guess, that kept on rattling in my head was this. Why? Would the rich man, we can call the rich man the boss, the big guy, whatever we want to call him, why does he commend his dishonest manager for being shrewd? Did you catch that? That's the one thing that kept rattling. So we're going to go with that. So the train is now leaving the station, and we're just going to roll with that in, in the sermon today. And so a little bit of historical background. Remember that it was completely normal and unfortunately it's normal in today's day and age too, for business people to do what we would consider predatory lending. So these people would charge exorbitant interest rates on commodities and other things in order to keep the poor poor and the rich rich. 
And it was also normal for the bosses and the managers who were the middlemen between the people that owed and the, and the bosses to take a cut off of those profits. So it's probably what the manager was doing. But somewhere along the line, one of his coworkers reports to his boss that he's not being honest. He's taking some more money than he needs. And so the boss calls the manager over and says, I want an accounting of everything. Give me all you got. And the manager starts to panic. He goes, oh my goodness, I'm going to lose my job, my livelihood. I don't know how to do anything else. So what does he do? He invites all of the people that owe his boss money, and he cuts their debt in half in order that when he is unemployed, he can go back to these people and say, hey, I made you a good deal. Remember, I'm the guy that cut your debt in half. Can you help me out a little bit? He maintains and builds relationships and friendships in kind of an odd way in case he needs them. And this is why the man is commended for being shrewd, right? The, man, the boss says, great work for doing that. And then at the end, it's a little odd, but then Jesus kind of says that as children of the light, we should take a lesson from the ways of the world and be shrewd. Now, what does that word mean? I, this is like the only time I ever use that word is in this particular gospel reading, shrewd. Well, it means to be intelligent, savvy, prudent. It can also mean to look out for one's own interests, which is exactly what the manager does. He looks out for his own interests. He makes sure that his livelihood, his survival is secure. But here's the interesting thing that happens in this text. Not only is this manager looking out for his own self-interest, he's also in a very backwards, kind of weird, slightly sketchy way, looking out for the interests of others by cutting their debts in half. The manager knows that actually the most important thing in life is relationships community, connection. In some way, this manager is also embodying the inbreaking of the reign of God, especially in Luke's gospel, which is all about reversals, right? Bringing the, the, the ones in power down and the ones lowly up and uniting humanity together as one in God's love, the, the interconnectedness of all things with God and creation, how I'm a part of you and you are a part of me that we're in this together. And so, what I've been then wrestling about is then how do we live as those shrewd children of light? First off, what is in our own best interest? And then how is it that we honor and listen and accompany others about what is in their best interest as well, keeping God's vision in mind at all times? I would say what's in at least my best interest is to not just understand, but live into my calling as a beloved child of God. And that grounds me in my purpose, which is then to be a vessel of God's light and love in the world, which allows me then to go forth and to love all and serve all. But this is hard work because our culture doesn't like us to think about what other people need. It's all about the ego, right? Me, myself, and I, what I need, what's in my own best interest. And usually it gets sideways. We begin to want to accumulate power, wealth, notoriety, success, whatever it is. We find that that way of life doesn't actually lead to life. It leads to death. Instead, Jesus invites us into this new way of life that understands that how I live in my actions impacts the rest and that we're all connected to one another, rooted and grounded in God. Over the pandemic, my family and I cleaned out stuff we didn't need anymore. Anybody else do that during the pandemic? I mean, what else were we gonna do, right? You're home and you start cleaning. Part of that was furniture. There was baby furniture we no longer needed and it was time to move on to the next stage of life. So we decided to post the crib that both of our boys had used on Facebook Marketplace. Now, this crib we had bought secondhand, so it was well-loved, but still in very good condition, and I decided to list it for free. 
because it was in my best interest. I wanted it out of my house, right? I didn't want to have to bring it anywhere. I didn't want to have to do anything. I just wanted it out, and I wanted to be able to embrace this new stage in our family life together. Quickly after that, I got a response from a lady named Maria. She was interested, so she came over to our house. And as I began to talk with Maria, she told me that she had a coworker who was a young, soon-to-be mom. It would be her first child. And this coworker didn't have a lot of financial resources. She wasn't able to buy furniture and buy all of the things that you need. And so Maria and her coworkers were gathering all of this stuff together, and they were going to throw her a big baby shower. And so as I was reading today's gospel text, the story kept coming up to my mind. Because again, what was in my best interest was, yes, to get rid of the crib, but to share this gift that had been given to us that both of our boys got to use. But it was also in the best interest of this soon-to-be young mom who now had a safe, warm, loving place to lay her newborn baby in to sleep at night or to take naps throughout the day. I wonder if that's what Jesus had in mind today. You know, Jesus was the Son of God, the Word of God made flesh who came to live and dwell among us. He wasn't just concerned with him. More importantly, he was concerned with the interests of his community, his neighbors, and his friends. And he did that by loving all and serving all. He broke down divisions and boundaries and barriers, worked to unite humanity together as one. But he came up against those powers of the world that didn't want to focus on anybody else but themselves. They wanted to continue to be on the top. So Jesus was a threat, and so they nailed Jesus to the cross. But in three days, God, through the Holy Spirit, raised Jesus from the dead to show us that God's life and God's love win. And it's through that promise of the empty tomb that we trust that God is making all things new. And that is what fills us with the best of things, God's life and love, and then sends us forth to be the best of things for other people, to share that life and to share that love with all we meet. So church, I'm gonna ask you the same questions that I just asked our kiddos. What is in your best interest? Popcorn it out, you have to be kind of loud so I can hear you. What's in your best interest? Good health, right? And access to health care. yes. What else? Family. That place, right, where we can just be and we know we are loved. Absolutely. What else? What do we need? What's in our best interest? Yes. Positivity, right? Hope. We need hope. What else do we need, church? What's in our best interest? Yes. Community, right? To know we're not in this alone. We got each other. Absolutely. What do you need? What's in our best interest? What? Cats? How about instead of, I love that answer. How about instead of cats, we say we need friends, not just people friends, but also friends that are dogs and cats and gerbils and hamsters to live that unconditional love. I love it. And what? Carrots or carrots? Carrot. Parents. Yes. All of those. We need carrots, parrots, and parents. I love it. I think that's fabulous. What else is in our best interest, church? Music. Music. Yes, music. Absolutely. How about we expand that too to the arts, right? We need the arts and humanities. Absolutely. You know what's in my best interest too? All of those things. Again, to be reminded that I am God's kid and there's nothing that I can do to make God love me any more or any less. That's what's in my best interest. So I would have to guess that if those things are in our best interest, those are also in the best interest of the world. So may we go forth as God's children of the light, acting shrewdly, okay, paying attention not just to us, but what our world needs to have abundant life. And may we go forth and help remove barriers and remove boundaries in God's name so that all people may be set free to fully live as the children of God they're called and created to be, and so that all may have life and have life abundantly. Amen.
The song of the day in your red hymnal is number 626, 626 by Gracious Powers. church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. Each prayer concludes with God of grace, and the congregation responds, hear our prayer. You may kneel or be seated. God, our Savior, you keep your church in faith and truth. Accompany those preparing for baptism or affirmation of baptism. Enlighten preachers, teachers, Sumerians, and all those who share your good news with the world. God of grace. Divine teacher, you instruct your children to be responsible stewards of your creation. Show us how best to care for the earth and its resources and guide those who work to develop sustainable practices. God of grace. Ruler of the nations, you direct those in authority, give leaders wisdom and compassion so that all may live in peace, inspire public servants to follow the example of courageous leaders, especially Dag Hammarskjöld, and safeguard the dignity of each person. 
God of grace, helper of the needy, you lift up those who are oppressed. Breathe justice into economic and social systems that perpetuate poverty and hunger. Sustain food ministries, clothing banks, and emergency shelters. God of grace, sustainer of and giver of life, you bless this congregation with abundance. Instruct us in the proper and faithful use of wealth and resources that we share generously. In thanksgiving for the birth of a healthy grandson, Helen James. God of grace. God of glory, you gather your saints around your throne. Keep us thankful for the witness of those who have gone before us and bring us with them to a heavenly feast that has no end. God of grace. Gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Please stand. The peace of Christ be with you always. I invite you now to share a sign of God's peace with one another.
Let us pray together. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, holy God, the first and last, life's beginning and its end. You called us to live as your people and promised to be our God. When time and again we failed to trust your promise and refused to walk in your ways, you sent your word made flesh, the root and offspring of David, to dwell among us and draw us back to you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this. For the remembrance of me. Send now your Holy Spirit upon these gifts and all who share this meal. By your Spirit, wipe away all tears and mend with mercy what sin has torn, that we might await Christ's coming with glad and joyful hearts, and at last feast forever at the supper of the Lamb. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ invites you to this table. Come, taste, and see. You may be seated.
And now together as a community, we will partake in this feast that God lays out and serves all people across time and space. Everyone is welcome to this meal. You don't have to be a certain age. You don't have to be a member. We're not going to check your baptismal ID card at the table, I promise. All are welcome because we are all beloved children of God, and the gifts of God are free. First, I'll invite those who are worshiping with us online today to participate in communion. If you have some wine or grape juice and some bread available, we will take that together. This is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. And now for those who wish to come forward to receive communion, please follow the direction of our ushers. And if you need communion brought out to you, please let one of our ushers know, and we'll be more than happy to bring it out to your seat. Our communion song during this season is number 465 in your red hymnal. 465, as the grains of wheat.
give everybody blue. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand for our blessing. God who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Our sending song today is number 710, 710. Let streams of living justice. Yeah. 
Go in peace with Christ beside you. Thanks be to God.